24th. Now let's start off with God in prayer. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for food on our table and roof over our heads. We hope you. to me. Uh, God from ancient 
Hello, students. Welcome to another virtual Bible study with me. I'm so glad that you joined me for this time. Uh, an email went out to you today telling you about tonight's Bible study. And we always include every Friday in that email an attachment that has the study guide in it to help you learn the most from our lessons as possible. So let's jump right in and learn from the Bible tonight on the subject of integrity. On the subject of integrity. Integrity refers to a willingness to do what is right in any situation. A person of integrity does not do what is right for the purpose of impressing people or avoiding trouble, but rather they do right simply because it is the honorable thing to do. Integrity is an issue of character that demonstrates our faith is real and our desire to obey God is genuine. This is the, basic, the basics of what integrity really is. In other words, it is you do what you say you're going to do. It also, one other person described to me years ago that integrity is being the right person even when nobody else is looking and doing the right thing when nobody else is looking. Uh, being Living your life in the dark the same way you live your life in the light uh, when other people can see you. Um, so let's look now to the Bible. What does the Bible say? First of all, note what these verses that we're about to cover now say about the importance of integrity. So first we want to look at the importance of integrity. It's not just enough to know what it is, but why is it important for you and I to live a life of integrity? Let's look at three things on this subject here. Number one, God sees all we do even things done in secret. God sees all we do, even things done in secret. Proverbs 5.21 says this, For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he ponders all his paths. Uh, you and I must realize that according to God's word, God sees everything that we do. Now, the positive of that is, the good side of that is, when we do good things and we do the right things, God sees that. The bad and the negative side of that is, is that God also sees the times that we do the wrong thing, that we make a decision to do the wrong thing. That's also what God sees, because God sees it all. Number two, doing right pleases God more than sacrifices. Doing right pleases God more than sacrifices. Proverbs 21 and 3 says this, to do righteousness and justice is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. To do righteousness and justice is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Doing right pleases God. Doing the right thing is more pleasing to God than any sacrifice that you could try to offer to God or make to God. A third thing we're looking at, because remember we're looking at the importance of integrity. It's not just enough to know what integrity is. It's not even just enough to know that we're being told we should live a life of integrity. But what does the Bible say about the importance of integrity? There were three, there are three things under this part of our lesson. We've looked at two already. The first one being God sees all, even things we do in secret. Number two was doing right pleases God more than sacrifices. Number three, and that is this, integrity in small things equals integrity in big things. In other words, if you can do the right thing, even with the smallest areas of your life, you are someone then that will do the right thing with even the big areas of your life. If you do the right thing in your small responsibilities, in the larger responsibilities, you also will be someone that does the right thing. Luke chapter 16, verse number 10 says it this way. Luke 16, verse 10. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. So what does the Bible say about the importance of integrity? Number one, God sees all we do, even those things done in secret. Number two, doing right pleases God more than sacrifices. Number three, 
Integrity in small things equals integrity in big things. So let's now go to the second part of our teaching, and that is this. What does the Bible say about the benefits of integrity? When you and I do the right things, when you and I live in such a way to live with integrity in our lives, what are the benefits to that for you and I? Let's look at them together. And there also in this one is three principles for us to learn from this one. The benefits of integrity. Number one, it will guide you and keep you on a good path. Integrity will guide you and keep you on a good path. Listen to Proverbs 11 and 3 when it says this, the integrity of the upright will guide them, but the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. I want to read that verse for you one more time. The integrity of the upright will guide them, but the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. So when you have a life that you're living of integrity, where you do the right thing, the Bible says that that will guide you and that will benefit you. So number one, the benefits of integrity is it will guide you and keep you on a good path. Number two is this, people won't have bad things to say about you. When you live a life of integrity, one of the benefits is people won't have bad things to say about you. Titus chapter two, verses seven through eight. Titus chapter two, verses seven through eight says this, in all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of good works. How many things? Paul's very clear there. He's telling this young man, Titus, this young pastor, in all things, showing yourself to be in a pattern of good works, in doctrine, showing integrity, reverence, incorruptibility, sound speech, it cannot be condemned, that no one who is an opponent may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say of you. When you live a life of integrity, when you do the right things, this minimizes the bad things that people can say about you in this life. I told you there were three of them. We've looked at two. We're looking at the benefits of integrity. The first one being it will guide you and keep you on a good path. The second one being people won't have bad things to say about you. Number three is this. God rewards your acts of integrity. God rewards your acts of integrity. Psalms chapter 18, verse number 20 says this, The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, he has recompensed me. There's another verse also I want to give you, and that's in Matthew chapter 6, verse number 4, where it says this, That your charitable deed may be in secret, and your father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. You see, when you and I do the right thing, God really does reward us. The world may not see what you're doing. The world may not may even see what you're doing and still not applaud you for it. But God will reward you for doing the right thing. So what should you and I do in light of understanding our better understanding in light of knowing more about integrity and why we should live it and why it's important. What should you and I do? We must remember that integrity is a choice. You and I must choose integrity. It doesn't just happen. It's my conscious act in my mind and in my heart to do the right thing. You see, integrity is a choice to be truthful, even if it means you may get in trouble. Students, you have got to remember this because this is going to be where the challenge is going to come for you. There'll be moments where you know that telling the truth would put you in a place of trouble. But you and I must be truthful people. Truth is what shows forth our greatest aspects of integrity. Integrity is a choice to be truthful, even if it means you may get in trouble. Integrity also is a choice not to cheat on a test even when no one is watching or anything else. I'm using a test as an example here in school. Uh, but if you think no one's looking and you cheat on a test and you, if you're not careful, you're going to feel like as if nothing was wrong because you didn't get caught. That's not true. Someone who lives a life of integrity knows that to cheat, period, 
means that you've done something wrong and you forfeited your integrity. Integrity is a choice not to watch an inappropriate video online or with your friends, even if people around you think it is no big deal. We need to be very careful, students, about the things that we take into our eyes and into our ears. Be careful about the music that you listen to and the lyrics of that music. Be careful about the movies that you watch and that you stream online, that the videos that you watch on YouTube, that you watch things that are wholesome and not things that are filled with um, sex and violence and many other sinful aspects. In my closing thoughts, consider this. As we do what God wants us wants of us at all times, in all circumstances, and at all costs, we will become people of integrity. We need to remember that when we make a decision and live a life of integrity, all places, with all people, in all situations, in all circumstances, then we will become students of integrity. Another closing thought is this, acts of integrity are what God has required of us. That's found in Micah chapter six, verse number eight. And it is through such acts that we demonstrate true Christian maturity. Our acts of integrity, living a life according to God's principles and God's ways is another way to show the world Jesus Christ. It's also another way to reinforce our personal faith in God, knowing we're doing the right thing and God is watching us do that very thing. So I want to take a moment now to pray with you, for you, and over you. And I want to challenge you, students. Let's live a life of integrity. Whether anyone is looking or not, whether anybody else will even know or not, that we will make the right decisions, that you will make the right decisions to do the right things no matter what, okay? Let me pray for you right now. Join me. Gather around your screen right now and pray with me in this moment. God, we love you. Thank you so much for Jesus Christ dying on the cross for our sins. And I ask you for every one of these students, Father, that you would help them to be able to make the right choices and the right decisions, to make decisions for integrity, decisions to live in integrity, dear God, that they would do the right thing, whether people are looking or not, that they would do the right thing, no matter who, who, who is or how many around them are doing the wrong things, but that they will always strive to do the right thing, God. Thank you for these students. In your name we pray. Amen. Students, I miss you very much. Can't wait till we get to see each other again. Don't forget, we do have church services that have restarted 9 a.m. and 1030 a.m. on Sunday. Give us a call at the church to let us know that you're coming. So we're still having to do reserved seating because of uh, social distancing. So let us know. Underneath this video right here, you will find the church phone number and an email there. Reach out to us. Let us know if you have any questions. Most of, at least our regular students at Abundant Life Church, they have my personal uh, cell phone number. You can text or give me a call, and I'll be glad to help you. Hi, guys. My name is Kaziah Stilwell. I hope you learned something from the Word today. Let's go to God in prayer one more time. I thank God for everything we have. I thank God for family, friends, and shelter. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Bye.